BART is planning its next 40 years. It's been listening to you. I've loved it, and I especially love uh, the changes that are being made. Given the complexity of the system and how many trains are running, every morning and every afternoon that train is there at the time it's supposed to be there. Yeah, I think it's uh, amazing. I'm a fan, I'm a BART fan. For four decades, BART has been the backbone of Bay Area Transit, reducing traffic, improving our air, propelling our economy. Its beginning in September of 1972 was both historic and humble. In the beginning, BART only carried 100,000 customers a week. Now, Monday through Friday, it carries 400,000 riders every day. We're now serving about 400,000 riders a day, and we're trying to plan for 750,000 riders a day. And that's going to take an investment in capacity as well. Capacity is now managed by the same system that was state of the art in 1972, when BART was the world's first automated train system. The automatic train control system safely starts, stops, runs, and spaces up to 450 transit cars around the 75 mile system. Car 378. Give me a Corsico approaching Hayward. That automated train control system is fast becoming the number one cause of BART train delays. My name is Sean Steele. I work here at Hayward Shops, Hayward Maintenance Complex. I've been at BART for a total of 23 years. A lot of the equipment is obsolete, so it becomes very challenging to actually do the repairs. To do repairs, BART engineers have to scour the internet all over the world to look for parts that haven't been built in decades for a train system that is now the oldest in the nation. You're looking in different countries? Everywhere. We're trying to look in anywhere that we can find. You know, we're look using integrated circuits that have become very obsolete. We try to build 20 axles a week. Every two weeks, this actually fails. So we put brand new wheels, brand new bearings, rebuild gearbox, clean axle. Many of the parts are no longer made. Without us, the fleet don't move. The employees do a great job keeping the system running, but it's a 40-year-old system. West Oakland Station, this is a Richmond Foundry. I think one thing that that needs to happen. I don't know if they can do it or not because we don't have enough cars, but we need longer trains during the day because obviously we, we have standing room only. Excuse me. I often have to stand. During commuter hours, it's usually pretty tough. BART has a plan to renew and rebuild. It's time for reinvestment. New cars are on the way, and that's just the beginning. We're going to have to replace the communication system. We're going to have to replace the wayside power system. We're going to have to replace the trains. We're going to have to replace a lot of things. Destination signs need to be replaced. The cardboard equipment needs to be replaced. We need new servers. We need uh, new automatic train control equipment. And then the list goes on and on and on and on. You know, telecommunication needs to be updated. We're looking at extensions that all of it has to be tied together. Extensions to San Jose, the Oakland Airport, and Ebar to Antioch. That means more capacity is already headed our way. With that, we're looking at um, computer systems that need to be replaced. Fire, fire, free, Not only three, servers, three, but also what we call the MUX equipment, which kind of keeps track of where the train is at in the system. That's just a start. If we take a look system-wide, the operations control center also needs to be revised. Those all sound like priorities. They all are priorities. Expanding the Hayward maintenance yard is critical for future growth. What we envision it is, um, you know, more or less quarter of a mile from what we are here today is a total new facility 
which will enhance our secondary repair and including our truck bay facility. So this facility that I'm talking about, it is around 157,000 square feet. It's a two-story uh, facility and it's gonna house EMRS and ERS. ERS is electronic repair shop, and that's what we do our, you know, our computer and electrical equipment that we're repairing the trains. And EMRS is electrical mechanical repair shop, and that's what we do, like for instance, the air compressors, the hydraulic systems, or the heavy contactors that they go in the propulsion systems in the trains. Rebuilding the nation's first mass transit train system will be expensive. Where does the money come from? Well, the money's going to come from a couple of places, but let me first say where the money's not going to come from. Right now, the federal government is not offering us a lot of hope, and Sacramento is not offering us a lot of hope. So it's going to be the Bay Area that contributes. It's going to be the writers, it's going to be the um, taxpayers, and it's going to be the employees. We're in the range of about uh, $16 billion that is needed. We have about seven of that $16 billion. And then we need to prioritize. We're not going to ask the voters to pay for all of that up front. You're in the range of $3 billion that we will need to get to invest in the system. It's hard for people to imagine the cost of doing nothing. They think that if we don't invest in it, then we'll only have the service we have. And that's not the case, particularly an agent, agency at a critical point, as BART is right now. Um, if you don't invest anything new, then the condition of the system drops and drops and drops. Local taxpayers paid to build the original BART. Their contribution will be essential to rebuilding the system that will carry us and our children for the next 40 years. For BART TV, Mark Jones reporting.